because my guest is from Beverly Hills, California, an associate of mine, Dr. Ian Brown, who is a cosmetic surgeon and the founder of the Beverly Hills Medical Cosmetic Surgery Group. Ian, good evening. Dr. Federer, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm glad you came, because tonight we're going to tell the audience about one of the most innovative things that has happened in medicine and cosmetic surgery in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing we're going to tell our audience about is the new fat injection. And I think mm -hmm. I want you to tell us about it. I know you're the innovator on the West Coast, and as you know, I've been doing a lot of it here in New York. Yes. Today we have a new technique. It's called fat transplantation surgery. What I do is I suction out the fat, and I re-inject it into several different areas to fill out a problem area. Now, when you say suction out, why don't we tell the audience what we mean? Do we just, do we scare it out, or do we cut it out, or what? We make tiny little incisions, and then we liposuction out the fat cells from the abdomen or from below the neck or different areas of the body. In other words, you have uh, a little device mm -hmm. which is attached to yeah. suction. Mm -hmm. And we've had this on the show many times before, but the interesting thing is, and I, and I think you know our, our good friend, Dr. Giorgio Fisher from mm -hmm. Rome, who was yes. on the show with us, mm -hmm. and we described something similar to that. Mm -hmm. But now I think in the United States, it's become really a very, very uh, advancing technique. Mm -hmm. So the small scar is made. Now give me an example. Where can we put it? Well, for example, we can take some of this fat cell transplant material. From where? Well, usually we take it from the abdomen or from below the chin and I can inject it into the cheek area, into the chin area, or the uh, smile line, or the vertical frown so in line. here, the yes. nasal labial. Yes. So in other words, this is, uh, as we do in my office, and I think you've seen me, we did that surgery today mm -hmm. when you came over and saw mm -hmm. that case. It's basically an ambulatory outpatient type procedure. A mm -hmm. small cut is made yes. at the abdomen or sometimes at the neck. Yes. We take a little bit of fat out. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing you've done, which is very interesting, you, you refine the fat yes. in a way. Do you want to tell me about that a little bit? Well, I actually put it through a special process to get rid of any of the blood byproducts so that when I re-inject the fat cells, it, le it changes immediately and there's no bruising afterwards. Now, does it hurt? Um, it is a minor surgical procedure. We do it under local anesthesia. So there's so minimal there's pain. Minimal pain. Um, it's quite revolutionary and very outstanding. Good. Now, as you know, and uh, uh, we've been talking about a lot of collagen and mm -hmm. silicone, and as yeah. you know, I'm the first to use the collagen injections mm -hmm. on the East mm -hmm. Coast, and most of us don't use silicone in the mm -hmm. face. How do you compare the collagen injections with the fat suction? How do your patients uh, accept either or? Well, I think collagen is excellent for certain things. It is a very, very minimal uh, surgical procedure. You're not actually removing tissue to re-inject. You have a right. syringe, and you just inject that. Um, it works very nicely. Uh, the problems are that it doesn't last a lifetime. I think the other procedure is nice <coughs> because it's using the patient's own tissue, and it should last a lifetime. Right. Well, the things that I've, I've also found about using uh, uh, the collagen is that once you've tested the patient for it, mm -hmm. it is a natural living substance and mm -hmm. patients like it. But one of the only drawbacks that I found with the fat injection mm -hmm. is that many patients don't want any type of surgical procedure done. Well, now, if we're doing fat suction on, mm -hmm. say, the belly yeah. or the hips that I do and I have the fat already there, mm -hmm. then it's a perfect time to do a fat injection. That's true. And mm -hmm. as opposed to the collagen where a patient can walk in at uh, 2 o'clock and by 2.30 they're on their way home. That's true. Well, why don't we go ahead and see some of that uh, wonderful tape that you were kind enough to bring. Okay. That we uh, did that out in Los Angeles. All right. And here it is right here. Uh, we can see that right there you were liposucking some of the fat, and then you take the fat, and you are filtering right now. You put it into the syringe, and then you are going to inject into the area that you cho uh, choose to augment. In this instance, it's the malar prominence, the cheekbones, and uh, rather nice. It works fabulous. It's so easy to do. We can build up the cheeks, the chins, even the nose. Uh, any problem we can fill in now with this fat tissue. Does it move? No. That's the beauty about it also. It's fat cells. It's not liquid. That's right. So it stays where we place it. And remember when uh, you saw me do it in the office, what I did mm -hmm. when I injected, I just took it directly. Mm -hmm. And the patient, they felt nothing because it was under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. They had uh, almost no bruising. Mm -hmm. And the, the, in the cases we've done now, I've been doing it now for well over a year, and a, about a year and three months. Okay. And the cases that I've done, I think the patients are satisfied. Oh, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm pleased. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's almost a 50-50 uh, match between the collagen. I'm, I'm very pleased, especially with the new Zyplast. The mm -hmm. Zyplast is the third generation of the collagen, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Now, why don't we go ahead and look at some of those wonderful pictures that you uh, gave us of uh, 
the patient you've done. Let's okay. have let's go to the first case. Now tell us about her. How old is she? The first patient had a very shriveled up mouth and cheek area. So we filled in the mouth and the cheek area with a lot of the fat tissue that we obtained from the abdomen. Oh. The patient's about 55 years old. Mm -hmm. Look how brain. much more youthful she looks. Did you do any of the procedures besides the uh, fat injection on her? No, this is basically a fat injection uh, procedure. All right, we're going to go back and see a few other ones right now. Okay. But uh, this patient, did she, uh, what was the difference between the first case and the, and the, the follow-up? How many days? Oh, we're talking about six months. I year, see. Something Fine. Like that. Now, here's, um, describe this to our audience, please. Okay, this is the same patient. <coughs> We're seeing her from the side, and you can see how hollow her uh, cheek looks from fat atrophy. And now we have plumped up the face with her own fat tissue, radically changed the appearance in a very simple procedure. Now, that's very interesting because, you know, the main problem with aging is there is an atrophy or a loss of tissue in people as they get older. It's seen in the hands, mm -hmm. it's seen in the face. As yes. a matter of fact, I often do that in the hands. I use some, some filling um, mm -hmm. uh, solution to fill up tissue around the veins in the hands mm -hmm. so women's hands don't look so tired. Mm -hmm. And that, coupled with a chemical peel, is terrific. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back and see some more of these wonderful cases. Tell us about this lady, Dr. This Brown. patient had liposuction of the fat tissue below the chin area to give, uh, to give her a better profile. Well, that's Quite a, a nice change that's a nice from result. a very uh, simple procedure. We're talking about 15, 20 <coughs> minutes. Did you go ahead and show her how she'd look on your computer imaging system, which we're going to discuss later? That is, was so easy to do with this patient. It was uh, pretty much exactly the way she turned out. And that's a big, big plus today, to give patients an idea of how they're going to look before and how they'll look after a surgery, within reason, of course. And you can't guarantee that the patient will look exactly that way, but I think it's a fabulous new instrument. We're going to show some, another case, and you and I will go back and discuss this further. Now, tell yeah. us about this other case that you have. This patient is a 50-year-old individual who felt much <coughs> younger and wanted to uh, look as good as he felt. So we did a facelift, a nose job, a chin implant, some fat transplantation surgery. He looks fantastic. It's like Perry Como now. He looks terrific. He did a beautiful job. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but that's, that's an interesting point we want to bring out to patients. Many times the fat injection uh -huh. is exactly what the patient needs as opposed to merely having a facelift or having mm -hmm. a, even a chin implant. Mm -hmm. The patient loses tissue as they age. For some reason, we don't know what the biochemistry is, mm -hmm. but the patient loses tissue. Well, in the past, when we did facelifts only, there was a hollow appearance to the cheek sometimes because of the fat atrophy. Now we can add on to the facelift surgery the fat injection. Well, that in and of itself is fine, but for the mm -hmm. patient who just needs some extra addition at the cheek area or the okay. malar prominence. The, the malar prominence. Right. Sure. Let's go back and see that last case. Okay. Now tell us about that again. Well, that's this, the laterals this, of the same man. Yes. We actually gave him a chin. We augmented the chin. We lifted up the facial tissues and transplanted fat cells to give him a more youthful appearance. We can actually build up the chin now with uh, fat cells as well, too, as opposed to an implant. Well, I'll tell you, uh, some patients, are, it, it's mixed. Mm -hmm. uh, some people uh, I've uh, done a chin implant on. I explain the pros and cons of both, mm -hmm. and I find that it, it really depends upon how they feel about surgery. They, uh -huh. Most people are prepared for the injections as opposed to the chin implant. Yes, that's true. But again, it will, when, when you do inject the fat, and the patients, I tell them this all the time, they will lose some tissue mm -hmm. because the whole fat, which is a graft basically, uh -huh. may not take completely. It'll yes. take in part, we know that. Yes. And it does remain to be seen exactly how long they will suffice, and I think each patient will be different. Don't yes. you think so? Well, I think actually there are some patients that seem to absorb the fat cells, maybe one out of a thousand, something like that. And you do get about a 90% correction. It does last. We've been doing this in well, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills area for about uh, three years now. And it has, it has held up over time, and it's worked excellently. All right. Well, we'll be right back. And uh, okay. I want you to wait just one second, because we have a lot more interesting information to give you. Be right back. Oh, injection. Why don't we uh, discuss uh, some of the other indications and uses we can do with the new lipo injection technique? Well, you've been doing this surgery for quite a while now and have been getting excellent results. I've been doing it in the forehead, in the you crow's mean the wrinkles right yes, here. In mm -hmm. the forehead, in the crow's, crow's feet, feet area, in the folds from the nose down to the lip. Right down in here? Yes. Um, I've also been doing it in 
the chin, chin yeah. the cheek area, the um, any traumatic area of the body can be filled in. How about that? the fact that we've, we've even discussed using it in earlobes? I know you've done it. Yes, I did the, one case about a week ago. Yes, the earlobe gets shrunken sometimes. And older people especially. And we can plump it out and fill it out. Uh, we're actually using it in many different parts of the body now. I had a patient who had a, a buttocks implant done many years ago. It shifted. We had to remove the implant and then fill in the defect with fat tissue, and it took great. That's terrific. Now, um, many patients come in with these wrinkles around the neck. Have you mm -hmm. seen that? Yes, that's true. I've tried on a patient with some wrinkles, and it worked also. It, yeah. took, it took very nicely. So in effect, we can use this uh, fat injection technique anywhere in the body because yes. it's, your pa it's, the, it's the patient's own tissue. Exactly. Um, it can be used in the indication we use for mm -hmm. collagen, although I think collagen is more useful being the fact that you just take it out of the refrigerator and you inject it after you've mm -hmm. had your test dose. Mm -hmm. But uh, if a patient will allow us to take some of the fat out or during a surgery mm -hmm. technique, mm -hmm. for example, even when we do patient's eyelids, mm -hmm. an eye lift surgery, mm -hmm. that same fat can be used for injection in other parts of the face. It can be used very easily. In fact, in some patients who have uh, had trauma to the eye area with a defect, we now can fill that in with fat cells to plump it out. It works great. That's fascinating. Yeah. So that, in conjunction with liposuction, mm -hmm. I think we do, do a lot with patient body molding. Oh, yes, definitely. And sometimes uh, one of the people who really started to do it in Europe told us at one of the lectures we happened to have gone to in, in Japan, mm -hmm. he said, it's not how much you take out, it's what you leave mm -hmm. That's when, when you're molding the body. Mm -hmm. But I, I think especially in the buttock area, liposuction surgery has been mm -hmm. so very wonderful and has mm -hmm. changed people's lives. But now, well, uh, as you suggest, the, the lipo injection is such a wonderful uh, arm, addition to the armamentarium. It's, it's more refined contouring of the human body. It's state-of-the-art 21st century. Now, I know you have the computer imaging system in Los Angeles, in mm -hmm. Beverly Hills, where you yeah. practice, and all the, all the beautiful people come to you out there. You're, you're the doctor in mode, I understand, in Beverly Hills, but I, Thank you. I, uh, I know I've, I've worked with you, and you've done mm -hmm. some really beautiful surgery, and mm -hmm. we've worked together in New York on cases that I've done. How has the computer imaging system changed your practice? Because as you know, you were in my office today, and you mm -hmm. saw my new uh, ImageMaker 2000 system, which is the same one that you have. Yeah. How has it changed your practice, and then what do patients tell you about it? Well, first of all, I was glad to see that you have the same system as me, because I do feel that's probably the uh, best system on the market. It's uh, produced by Vision Concepts, the Image Maker 2000, and it's high resolution, a life-size representation of any profile of the human body that you want to obtain, and you can recreate images uh, right before the very patient's eyes of uh, new changes that you want to... Well, give me do. an example. A patient comes in for liposuction surgery. Uh -huh. uh, they have too much... Uh, they have, a man comes in with the love handles. How, how do you uh, uh, approach the, the problem? And tell, uh, what do you tell them? Well, it's very simple. Basically, we capture the image onto a monitor screen. Then we replicate the image. And then I simply use a graphic pencil to trim down the love handles to show the patient what it is we're trying to accomplish. We can do that with the nose with the chin, with the cheek, with the breast, any part of the body. Yes, yes, collagen, collagen, hair transplant. Yes. So almost any procedure mm -hmm. can be visualized. So the, now, patient, the patient now could <coughs> preview what it is that they will look like. Now, when the patient to ask you, Dr. Brown, am I going to get exactly what's on the computer? Well, we tell the patients that this is a structural design that we're trying to utilize to create that result. Obviously, it's not a guarantee, but at least the patient knows what the physician is trying to accomplish, and the physician knows what the patient desires. It's just enhanced communication between the patient and the physician. That's great. But what else can we, uh, can we do with it? Is there any other thing, for example, even on a cosmetic level? Can we mm -hmm. show the patient how they'll look with a permanent eyeliner, for example, in different oh, yes, colors? Definitely. I think you can uh, use that machine to demonstrate eyeliner surgery, to demonstrate lip liner surgery with the various colors. It's quite exacting and very, very high resolution. Good. Now, how about even, for, do you think it has some, any application for uh, uh, cosmetic uh, use in general outside of surgery? Can oh, I think so. I, I think we're beginning to see that today without actually touching uh, the client, the cosmetic individual can actually apply makeup in different shades and different tones in different parts of the face to show the result prior to even applying it. 
works very nicely. Well, that's that, that's very interesting. Do you think uh, there are any other new things you that they're doing in Los Angeles that we here in New York should know about? Because I know you always do all the we're on the phone once or twice a week discussing things about your cases or my cases, uh -huh. and we try to put things together. Well, I think some of the uh, conversations that we've had has really enhanced my practice as well too, especially with the uh, derma chemical PL. I think that has been a radical when I, use. When I presented that case in Japan, you, yes. you started to do some of the uh, techniques that I've shown you. Yes. And also, I don't just call you to know about the cases, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. I want about the weather and all those beautiful people walking <laughs> up and down Rodeo out there. There's, there's, That's there's, there's a method to my madness, you <laughs> see. Um, and in the instances that you've done, the chemical uh, dermabrasions, the way uh -huh. I've, I've taught you to do it, okay. what have you found as opposed to just doing plain dermabrasion? Well, I think there is no question there's a radical improvement in the technique. The results are far more outstanding, and I think the patients are more pleased. But I think that's the most important thing. Okay, another question I have for you. Mm -hmm. What is the newest uh, thing being done with uh, breast implant surgery? Well, I, we're starting to do this fat transplantation surgery into the breast tissue as well also, and it is working quite nicely. The fat transplantation surgery is useful for any part of the body, and it's taking quite well. You're not afraid about implanting fat into uh, the breast, per se? Well, we're concerned about it, but it seems to be working quite nicely. You can't augment it as well as you can with an implant, implant. but it does improve it does, the appearance it, it does help. with the patient's own tissue. Okay. So there's the benefit, but the drawback you know, is already well, we, We're ready. Now, you'll wait one second, and I'd like you to wait just one second also. We'll be right back. We have a message for you. Stonehenge, the place where you can become part of the legend. The ultimate European country in just one and a half hours from New York. They're very big, both in Los Angeles and New York. Now, what's the uh, thing they're asking you about? Well, we're, we're getting involved in chemical peel for some of the fine wrinkles around the lips and the mouth. And I know that you've developed some special techniques in that area. You know, uh, it's one of the things I, I get consulted about most uh -huh. frequently, about the wrinkles around the lips. People are getting these around the, this area here uh -huh. and in here. And either I use the, uh, the chemical peel dermabrasion, but sometimes just the new chemical peeling that I'm using, uh -huh. which I put into a special DMSO solution, which is a special vehicle, and I get a very nice penetration. And mm. it, it, it's the same effect as a burn. You mm -hmm. don't look great. Mm. But in a week later, you are terrific. Because that's what's important, getting that old skin off and getting uh -huh. some new skin on. Uh -huh. And what else are you doing out there besides the, the new burns and these uh, the breast injections? That, you know, People always ask me, California is the playground for breast implants. Well, beside the fat, do you find yourself in so many breast implants out there that uh, it's, it's called the playground for breasts in the world? Oh, definitely. The women are very, very interested <coughs> in having breast augmentation surgery. I would say maybe that's the second most common operation. Within an hour and a half period of time, the psychic well-being is radically changed. They feel great about themselves. They're going for lunch and they come out with a new pair of breasts, huh? It's true. That's terrific. I, I love that. And yeah. you're using the standard implant? You don't use that MIM implant? Well, I like the standard implant. I think that works quite well. I know you, you went through a few courses like that. Well, let's do something very nice for our audience now. Okay. They're tired. We're going to recap everything we've said for them so that when we quiz them later when we see them, <laughs> they'll be able to answer us. Okay. Now, so to go back, the new lipo injection, okay. we take it from one spot, yes. like in the belly or the okay. hip or the thigh, All right. be done in the local anesthesia. Yes. Take the fat, yes. filter it ever so slightly, okay. put it into a syringe with a uh -huh. special needle. Now, we want to just show that right now to the audience, the kind of instrumentation we use. Now, if you notice, this has a mildly beveled point, and this can be used for either sucking fat, which is usually used for, okay. and we have another one which is more pointy for injecting fat. Yes. It looks painful to go in there, but it's not because of the anesthesia. Oh, sure. No pain all right. at all. So we pull it out with this. We filter it, we inject it, okay. then we mold it into the area. Yes. Do you tape it after you do it? I don't tape it, but it is important to massage it in, to mold it to the shape that you like. What complications can you have using the lipo injection, that technique? Well, in, actually, I haven't had any problems since I've been doing this for over three years. You could get infection, possibly abscess, but not in my hands so far. Okay, and you can't get uh, rejection because it's your own fat. Exactly. Okay, so we talked about the areas again, nasolabial, lateral eyes perhaps. Uh -huh. Now, one thing we don't do, we do not inject in the eye and let no one at home ever go to a doctor and say they want to have 
it, something injected around here. Very dangerous. I've had uh -huh. patients who walk in and say, you know, all my skin is hanging where you inject something. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. We must do the eye lift operation or blepharoplasty. But even better, keep out of the sun. We always mm -hmm. tell the patients, wear sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Glass will filter out the UV rays. Mm -hmm. Got to do it. And even better than sunglasses, wear a hat. Stay out of the sun. Do a Greta Garbo. That's very <laughs> important. So we have the, the areas. We discussed forehead. Forehead. Nasolabial. Yeah. This area here, do you find a lot of people consulting you about those double chins? Can you exercise it off? Not really. You Not really. really need to suction that fat do out. Do you like facial exercises? I think sometimes they work on certain individuals quite nicely. You think they do work? I think that some individuals it does work. You know, we nice. do a lot of the facial therapies, my facials for patients. Do you like facials? No, I think you facials. better say yes. <laughs> I think facials in certain individuals is really great. My wife does it every I single she, night. I know. And it's important to it's also important not to wash with hot water. We discussed that. Yes. All right, so we discussed the, the, the new injection technique, which I think will really revolutionize a lot of, a lot of medicine. I know uh, mm -hmm. it's not going to take away the market from collagen, which I find mm -hmm. to be a superb substance. The new Zyplast for the deeper reconstructive areas, mm -hmm. the Collagen 2 for the more fine wrinkles, mm -hmm. and I don't use Collagen 1 anymore because I find it to be, it, it, it's eaten up by the body too quickly. But the Collagen you know, 2... Something else we didn't mention is in the foot area too, yeah. with calluses. Yeah. You can inject fat underneath there to make the calluses essentially disappear. You know, and so it has wide application. You know what's interesting? We, people don't even understand why they get calluses. Mm -hmm. A callus on the foot is a protective mechanism by the body because mm -hmm. you're putting pressure on a bony prominence exactly. and the body forms the callus. Mm -hmm. So chances are if you can't change your shoe, like young women, who look gorgeous in these long, high heel things, they're not going to change the shoe. But we can do is inject either fat or mm -hmm. the Zyplast called Kerogen mm -hmm. around that area, take yes. the pressure off that area in effect, and they can still wear these gorgeous shoes and go to Regine and dance all night. That's true. That's right. <laughs> OK. And we also now uh, want to tell the audience about the, the uh, again, how important this, this computer imaging thing is. And I think a patient is entitled to have an idea how they're going to look. When a patient comes in to me, it's fine if I show them other cases that I've done on patients. Mm -hmm. That doesn't put their face in there. 